everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterworth Plus. You know, it's a big episode for a couple of reasons. One of which is that I'm finally free from that last daily that was truly awful. The other one is that this could be our 10th win in a row. That's cool. I've been told, by the way, stop looking for both stopwatch and broken stopwatch. You don't get the stopwatch until you get 999 cents in your donation machine. Now, I knew that. Deep inside of the arcane knowledge of my cerebral cortex, that information existed. I just forgot how to access it. You were right. That is the marquee unlock. Ooh. We need to, I mean, if possible, to be able to donate a lot would be super sweet. But our don donation machine, you know, you got to take a nihilist approach to it. It is what it is. You know, it's Camus the Stranger. You gotta be a little bit uh, lackadaisical about it because you don't control it in the end. You're just kind of along for the ride. Um, this run, by the way, is not very good to begin with, but it's it, we're being positive. It's one tier's upgrade away from being like at least half decent. Money is not going to be a problem, and we were just talking about that being a relevant concern for us. So I'm for it. I heard you up here. Um, we're one-third of the way towards Bookworm. <laughs> That's a modest positive. Um, if we want to be uh, a little bit generous with our use of the word modest. How is it that modest can... I mean, again, this is also like an English... You're, you're, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to myself, and I am also the converted. Um, why is it that modest means non-boastful? But also, like, modest in many ways has a more positive connotation as, like, almost being bountiful. Like, if you were gifted a modest sum, you wouldn't expect that to be a small amount of money. You would expect that to be a, an amount of money that is at least non-negligible. I don't know. I'm being overly pedantic. It's just the English language, dude. It's got, it is a little funky. So, as a result of the, uh, and by the way, we don't, we don't know where our HP is, so that'll go a long way towards uh, determining how we feel about this run as we head down to the second floor. At least one red heart would be, uh, with one spirit heart as well, would be a nice little buffer so that we still have the ability at least to get a uh, deal with the devil if we play perfectly. Yo, well, okay, so everything immediately falls by the wayside because we are going to take missing though. We're not going to take it yet. This is like acknowledging when you see missing no early and you don't take it, it's basically like knowing that you have like a bachelor or a bachelorette party coming up and you're like this weekend I'm gonna mistreat my body a little bit. So what I'm gonna do right now is make sure that I'm set, you know, do everything I can do. Eat some eat some salads. You know, buy something from the shop with the money that I have just in case things start to go, you know, off the rails a little bit here. Things are about to get a little goofy. So we're trying while we have the ability to control our destiny. To make sure our ducks are in a row. What? <laughs> okay, um... We're not gonna take the D100N missing no. Because it's just stupid. And I know that sounds uh, judgmental, but... It, it's just kind of dumb. You'll breakfast yourself in half the time. What I'm gonna do... I'm gonna go to the shop real quickly. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, okay? I'm going to buy Boomerang instead of Car Battery, because I don't want to double up on a reroll. And I'm going to drop to a Hearts. I'm going to reroll everything, including my run. Then we got a passive item, which I'm stoked about, because our passive item is something that will aggregate as we reroll through missing, though. Then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to reroll Tammy's head. Tammy's head turned into Pandora's box. Pandora's box gave us a little bit of HP. Okay? You see what I'm doing here? Just, again, it's the, hey, I'm going to eat uh, salads all day to make up for Friday night. We're coming in here. Give me another passive item, please. Plus, we're getting through Hemolacria. What a great day for us. Um, and to be honest with you, that's another passive item. I'm a happy man. And I don't think, in particular, we've squandered much. There's missing, though. We get re-rolled immediately. So we do get to keep the D100. But I'm not going to use the D100 
Or at least I'm not going to use it much. I would like to replace this, to be honest. We already have the Zane. We have incredible amounts of built-in Zane. Actually, you know what I will say is that I'm almost like... I think it's unfair for me to hold the D100. It's almost too good. Because it means if we get a crappy reroll from missing, though, we just go, okay, so what? And we we turn it into something not necessarily better, but at least it has a chance to be better. So I'm going to be very careful. With one built-in reroll per floor, we don't want to breakfast ourselves. My new protocol is I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have self-discipline. I love the rerolls. We're going to have enough regardless. I'm going to save the D100, and we're going to use the D100 to reroll out of bad missing those situations. We're not there yet. Like, this is not an amazing run. Kind of a waste of the many talents of Monstro's lung. But it's it's not horrible, obviously. So I do want to spend for the key. And then we will go to our shop. This is almost... Uh, I mean, I don't want to say it's like a bad thing, but... Too much Zane early... It kind of, I'm not going to say it spoils the bunch, but it puts you in a weird spot, in my opinion. Because now I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. 99.9% .9 of my brain power is just focused on, like, maintaining or doing something about the absurd levels of Zane that we got going on. So, it doesn't really matter which one we take, to be honest. Keep that in mind. I designed this rhyme to explain in due time. Yeah, you just go with it, okay? Like, this is... I don't really know what to say about where this runs at, except that, you know, watch the screen closely if you care about the results. It should be an extremely simple win. But you never know. Maybe two overpowered items is almost like a little dangerous here. I'm so eager to replace D100. I'm going to level with you, of course. Oh, we got a Holy Mantle. And just god-awful stats. Get me out. It's, uh, what I was going to say when I said I'm going to level with you, is that it's very, very stupid to be mad about having the D100. I don't want you to think that I'm upset about having this item, because that's not the case. Um, all I am is aware of the fact that, you know, my own self-control when it comes to the D100, it hasn't been terrible. But, uh, there's always the risk. I'm gonna be like, this run's not good, this run's not good. And normally with the D100, when you roll yourself into something good, there's like a sense of safety, because you get to stick there. Uh, here, I could go through like, you know, five re-rolls just to have four rooms of a powerful run. I gotta sneeze. <coughs> wow, that's a, I'm never a double sneezer, so that one was an Ebenezer, Eba sneezer Scrooge. Why did I laugh like it was funny? Anyway. Wait, excuse me, sir. How rude. I think, uh, I think I got the right idea. I think my brains parse this run properly. And the way that you handle it is you use the D100 to get yourself out of a bad run, not to create a good run. So we're one item away from becoming... Oh, thank you so much. We are one, uh... Item away from becoming Guppy. I don't know if our damage will stay uh, multiplied for our next reroll, but we're probably good at this point. And dude, I am feeling good. The Java arc is over. I didn't get a chance to mention it because the daily uh, we just did dominated my cognitive sense. But uh, the Java arc is over. The exam went extremely well. It was a nice reminder. I tweeted this, so if you already saw the tweet... First off, you know, I apologize for subjecting you to two personal glorifying anecdotes. It makes me seem a little bit full of myself. But really, for like the last month of this class, I've been like, I'm done. Like, did I do something to my brain that permanently made me stupider? I don't know if you, you probably can relate, but I've been like a really good student. And then I tried really hard on a lot of this stuff and was just like, I don't know what's going on. You know what? I'm not giving this up. Like, I still did okay over the past month, but I was working, like, three times as hard to do worse. So I genuinely was like, I don't know, I must have, like, maybe I hit my head really hard while I was asleep or something like that, and I've concussed myself. Genuinely, I, I was entertaining the thought that I had gotten permanently stupider, which is, you know, scary when you don't have that much room to go. 
uh, in the downward direction. But then I got in the exam and I just knocked out the the programming questions in like, you know, under 45 minutes. And I was like, oh wait, I know how to do this. <laughs> It helps that they're pretty much like direct uh, exercise questions uh, from Hacker Rank that I've done like 20 times, you know. So that was helpful, but either way, I was like, oh, this is right, I know how to program. Just had a bad month, and now I feel like a genius, so I'm going to be insufferable for a while. But I'm happy, like I was saying, you know, my... Uh, now that that's out of the way, I have so much more space in my life for activities. That... Three to twelve hours a week. It's it's that time being available is gonna be like a force multiplier for me. I'm very excited. So much more time to play Isaac. <laughs> How's this run? Very bad rate of fire. What wh I hit retrovision and it gave me the sound you get when you get a transformation. Uh, very very bad rate of fire, which is pretty wild considering we have tractor beam. But. Hey, that's pretty nice. I mean, I'm willing to give this a shot. I'm not gonna D100 through this. I'm really, I'm being sincere with you. I'm not gonna run the numbers because it's not that kind of channel. But I do think that if we were going to uh, use D100 as often as like felt appropriate, like whenever we were like, I don't think it's that good, we would end up re-rolling through good items way too quickly. You have to remember, in the end. The only run that we get to stick with is whatever one we beat the game with. And then that lives on in per perpetuity, you know, in our mind's eye. Uh, we don't want to dig for a great run just to lose it. So I'd rather leave some of those items available. Now, here, I'll tell you. Uh, okay, fine. We got to spun faster. This is a great run. Our rate of fire is horrendous, but... Uh, Having Polyphemus piercing shot, being able to get to spun, which is going to stick with us uh, through thick and thin. Our actual damage is... You know what? Turns out this run is not that good. Our amazing damage does not even come close to making up for our terrible rate of fire, but I'm sure we will get there at some point. So I'm not going to reroll again. Again, it, I don't want to throw away the existence of good items permanently for a very, very, very temporary benefit. I think if you play this seed for yourself, did I show you the seed? S9TK2JTT? Play it yourself, if you're, if you're interested. You know, see if, you know, you use the D100 as much as possible. Maybe you end up having a substantially uh, more fun run. Maybe you end up having an easier time of things, but... I also think if you, you know, the reroll effects are magnified by having two items that do it. Dude, our spiders are so good. Okay, down to the next floor. I know we're, I wouldn't say rushing, but there's no real reason for us to be there on that floor, especially because we wanted to reroll the run. This is a cursed eye. We have 0 0.44 speed. This is the kind of situation where you've been waiting for the D100. So we get Beelzebub. Now we have soy milk. We have 0 0.82 damage. <laughs> what was worse? Oh, it's it's so easy to tell you. 0 0.44 speed is way worse than soy milk 0 0.82 damage. This is still really bad. Oh my god, look at the evil eyes though. This is still pretty terrible, but uh it's 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 workable for the time being. This is like that uh, 2000 movie uh, Bedazzled, starring Brendan Fraser. I keep uh, re-rolling my life, wishing uh, for greatness, and instead I just find myself in increasingly comedic situations that are also tragic for me as a human being. Wow, speaking of which, hematemesis. Could have been better. I mean, we can fly, we should get that key, but this run is beyond uh, being mad that I'm not picking up a key, okay? This run is like, we're in full, you know, goofy territory. I'm actually, here's how much I buy into what I was saying earlier about the D100. You can probably guess for yourself, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the way this run looks right now. Um, I still don't want to use the D100 right away. If we can grin and bear it through this floor, I think that would be long-term the best thing for us, so... 
I'm probably just gonna try to swing that. And we have 25 Mr. Mega Bombs. Who knows? Even the homing evil eyes. They're not getting it done. Please, I beg you. <laughs> really? I didn't even pick it up. Broken brain. Maybe I did hit my head. Maybe I hit it last night after the exam, though. I meant to tell another story about the exam. One of the... Uh, one of the students going to the exam got stuck in the elevator on the way up. And I felt bad. But, uh... You know, when the professor was taking attendance... One of the students was like, by the way, Jennifer stuck in the elevator, and I laughed. I didn't laugh, I want this to be clear, I did laugh openly. But I wasn't laughing at Jennifer's misfortune. I was laughing because it was a funny situation, okay? If I got stuck in the elevator, I would want you to laugh when people mention it in class. Because that's just hilarious. You know, you're going to the final exam, you're all stressed out, probably. You step in the elevator, you're stuck. I get, you know, if you're claustrophobic, whatever. You know, it's not a pleasant place to be. She was out after like 45 minutes, but still. If anybody from my class is watching this, I want you to know that that laugh was not a laugh of mean-spiritedness. It was a laugh of togetherness. I was laughing, I hope, with the rest of the class, who was laughing on the inside, but was like, I shouldn't laugh on the outside, because that'll be rude. Uh, here's the thing. If I ever get trapped in an elevator in a situation that doesn't affect my health in any way, I hope you laugh about it. There, uh, hopefully my misery can bring a little bit of joy into the world. But then, my professor got to me, and he was like, why aren't you sitting in your usual seat? And I said, someone left a bunch of garbage in my seat. So I just sat over here. And then the dude who had sat across from me was like, that's not garbage, that's Jennifer's belongings. <laughs> and that time, all right, I'll apologize for that one. I will say, I was not trying to call her belongings garbage. Sorry, I had to blow my nose a little bit there. All I was, I was mad because there was like an orange juice cart in there. And I was like, why is someone leaving their garbage at their desk when they're not in class. Like, at first, I didn't sit there because I was like, oh, one of my other classmates is taking the seat. And that did indeed turn out to be the case. Um, but then, I was a little peeved. I was like, oh, somebody came into the classroom, maybe from the last class, and then didn't clean up their trash. So I called it trash. It turns out, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I don't really want to do boss rush. I mean, we're not going to do anything with Ipecac on this run anyway. Just, just send me, dude. So that one, oh, we got Guppy. So that one I'll apologize for, okay? Even though I think it's an honest mistake. <laughs> anyway. I don't know, I, I feel bad for her. I mean, there was no reason to apologize because she didn't hear it in the first place, unless he knocked on me. Um, I heard a couple of other people guffaw as well. It wasn't like I was laughing openly. Here's, I get annoyed sometimes, alright? Because, like, everybody knows what it is and isn't okay to laugh at. I recognize, you know, sometimes laughing at something that's dark humor is a bit of a social faux pas. I'm definitely not one of those guys that's like, you know, Ricky Gervais, if you get offended, that's your fault. You know, I think there are things that are offensive, for sure. But I think in this situation, people are like, it's not okay to laugh at the fact that one of your classmates is innocuously stuck in the elevator. I disagree. I recognize it's a slightly, it's a schadenfreude thing to laugh at. It doesn't make you a bad person to laugh at it. Absolutely not. I, I don't think so anyway. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes people trip over themselves and they will be like, you know, it's not okay to laugh at that. But sometimes, they're just demonstrating how in tune they are with what's acceptable and what isn't by societal standards and not actually being like this isn't funny that's all, all i want i want you can say it's not okay to laugh at it but i do when you say it's not okay to laugh at it there's like an implicit sort of admission and that's that it is funny otherwise there wouldn't be the threat of laughing at it to begin with at least in this situation, okay?
You may disagree. Maybe it makes me a terrible person. It was also highly unexpected. When when the, my classmate was like, Jennifer's stuck in the elevator. My brain didn't, it, it bypassed like the critical thinking part of my brain. It was like, what? <laughs> that can happen? Never even crossed my mind. Anyway. If it's okay to laugh about it now that I'm telling it, then it's okay to laugh at it in the moment. That's my personal opinion. But it's okay, I'll never see those people again anyway. Except there was one dude who did tweet me and said, hey, I think you're in my Java class. And I didn't respond because I was like, I've been telling a lot of anecdotes from that class, so I'd like to maintain plausible deniability. And now that the class is over, you are correct. That, that is me. Not because I was acting up in class, just because, you know. I mean, you see, I look like how I look, so you see this bald Canadian guy, you're like, especially if you hear my voice and you know what it sounds like, you're like, okay, that's probably him. Or, Seth Rogen's less successful cousin is in my class. What is this run? Well, we're, we're on the cathedral. Uh, you know, 19 minutes into the run. So again, it's just kind of like the same thing that I always tell you. If you get the D100, don't fall victim, don't be one of the lamers, okay? The lamers, they actually think the D100 is a bad item. Don't pick it, it's too, you could re-roll your good run into a terrible run. Yeah, and then six rooms later, you could re-roll it into this, okay? So, I know that this is actually Missing No that gave us this, but it's the theory of the re-roll that counts no matter what. Now, Missing No is way dicier, but holding the D100 here means that we're insanely protected from, like, Oblivion. So we will win this run easily, presumably, unless we get, like, maybe two horrendous re-rolls in a row. Um... Uh, not special bombs. Not special bombs. Um, we will move on to 10 wins in a row. And I got a level with you. This is a quick run today. Sounds good to me. Did you watch the last run? It took us 65 minutes to get a bad daily rank. And I slowly lost my mind as, uh, as it went on and on. So today, if there's any day I'm not going to apologize for having a, uh, a shorter run... It's one where I get Missing No and the D100, and it comes within context after a run like that. So, as of right now, I'm a, I'm a very, very happy man. And uh, the fact that it's going to come with a double-digit win streak is just the icing on the cake, no question about it. Now, there's the modest, and it's, uh, I don't know, modest in this chance I guess means fair, but there's a modest chance of a... Uh, of a loss, it's pretty unlikely, but if we get horrible, like, Isaac's heart level reroll, and then Ipecac my reflection or something like that, it could all go wrong. What is this? It's Mom's knife, okay. Well, I'd like, we already have spawn, actually, now that I think about it. Let's get weird. Mom's knife is too easy. This is weird. <laughs> Are these static tiers? They don't... I don't know. They might be Jacob's Ladder now that I think about it. But if these are static tiers... Um, yeah, we have money equals power. Uh, if these are static tiers, that might count as an unlock for us. Dude, we are just... Any enemy that walks into these eyeballs is done. Let's not even talk about the fact that when we get hit, we get these sweet bone hearts. Or we get these sweet bone Tammy's heads. Or as I call them, Bone Tammy Hawks. But um, bum sh this is a joke for all the cinephiles out there. For your consideration. Nope. Uh, am I gonna re-roll this run? Yeah, but only because I love you. This is a, is a cool run. I hope you got a nice little sampler for it. Hopefully we'll be able to order the entree of that at some point, but for now... We're gonna go for a full-on reroll. It's an epic fetus. Not a cool epic fetus. So I hope we get a, another reroll. It's just a regular old epic fetus. I mean, it's doing a ton of damage. We have infestation too on top of that. So no, looks like that's how we're gonna finish the run. Well, there's my largest mistake of the run. Maybe shouldn't have gotten rid of the cool eyeball tears, but hey, we had the chance. 
We had a chance to pick up one more cool thing, so it felt like uh, the right time to try it. Easy money. You know, how could I not go through with Delirium? In good conscience, I can't be that guy on this run. Uh, I gotta be honest. Oh, never mind. What's happening? Uh, we're gonna reroll this one, because Fire Mind is too dangerous to stick with. Alge is so good, though. Um, but... Oh, that's Isaac's Heart. Yo, really cool run. Isaac's Heart probably makes it untenable. Fun run, though. No doubt about it. Like, this is a cool setup. Anyway, we're gonna reroll it immediately. Um, I do- I worry about breakfast. This is a, also a sweet run, especially with Deadshot. Our range is horrendous, but... I think this could- even if this is Delirium directly below us, I'm fine with it, I think. I'll admit I'm happy it's not. Uh, and you know what? I don't want a third level meat boy, but I will get one cube of meat. This is just one more item to reroll, I think. Straight up, uh, bookworm maybe? No, it can't be. Oh, it is. <laughs> I guess we. St that's right. We started with uh, uh, for dummies, telepathy for dummies. But then we got uh, Book of Revelations later, and I said, nah, let's stick with the D100. A decision that has been paying comedy dividends ever since. Will we reroll this run? Dude, this is a tough one, because the damage is so good. But versus Delirium, I don't think we're going to like it. This one is a little bit sort of inconsequential. I do appreciate Pyromaniac, uh, but 16 rate of fire, 15 damage. You know, Pyromaniac is really, really, really good against Delirium, but it's not that fun. Please tell me we haven't breakfast. Oh, baby. Rip bitrate. Okay. Um, we are immune to explosions still. So I think this is our moneymaker. It's a, it's a weird, sad bombs. I will say, we got a lot of the same items that we've had recently. So I definitely feel like we're in the clear, or we, let me say this, uh, less ambiguously. We were right to not re-roll as much. We re-rolled relatively conservatively over the course of this run, and still, you know, we may be like a roll or two away from starting to get into that breakfast territory. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Uh, all I know is I, I keep standing right next to enemies and not getting hit. We got like scatter bombs, sad bombs, dead eye. Pyromaniac is just an unbelievable enabler for us right now. Could use more than 12 range, admittedly. But dude, this is like... We ended the run with strong Zane. That's where you always want to be. Easy wins. What are we going to do now? Completely reroll and see if we would have breakfasted ourselves. I don't know. It's now Ludo's been added on top of it and it's a uh, it's a nightmare of its own creation. Get me out. Fun run, though. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe to the radio. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For the next, I'll see you next time. See ya!